Sunday morning service. We're glad that you could be here with us. We're going to be celebrating fathers today. Happy Father's Day to all of you fathers here with us. We're glad that you can join us, whether you're online or if you're here in person this morning. Please stand with me as we sing Faith of Our Fathers. Faith of our fathers living still In spite of dungeon, fire, and sword Oh, how our hearts beat high with joy Whene'er we hear that glorious word Faith of our fathers, holy faith We will be true to thee till death our fathers chained in prisons dark Were still in heart and conscience free How sweet would be their children's fate If they like them could die for thee Faith of our fathers, holy faith We will be true to thee till death. Faith of our fathers, we still strive to win all nations unto thee. And through the truth that comes from God, mankind shall then indeed be free. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Faith of our fathers, we will love both friend and foe in all our strife and preach thee to as love knows how by kindly words and virtuous life. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Amen. Great singing this morning. Shane, if you would please open in prayer for us this morning. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for uh, bringing me and my family to church to hear your word preached, to hear your word taught and expounded upon, that it would, uh, Lord, pray that it would be planted in our, all of our hearts, that it might bear fruit for thee, to your glory and honor. And, uh, Lord, I pray that you'd uh, help us to be focused and to be attentive to your word, Lord, to not be distracted, but to, uh, Lord, to uh, dig into your word this morning. I pray that we would be fervent in our singing of praises and worships, worship to your holy name, for you are so good, O God, to us. And I pray that you would uh, guide and direct our country, our province, and our church, O Lord, for we need you. We are a difficult people. Uh, we praise you for all your goodness to us. Amen. 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 We didn't do so good in Sunday school. Let's try it again. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Father's Day to all of the fathers that are here in the room with us and those fathers that are watching online. You know what? I want to have all the dads at this time. I want all the dads to stand up for just a moment. If you are someone's father... Would you st or you fill the role of someone in their life as a father, would you stand up? Remember, fathering is not biological. It is emotional, spiritual, and if you will, phys uh, physical by being in presence. So let's pray. For let's give all our dads a hand, first of all, and thank them. <laughs> Amen. Dads, you made the right choice. You led the way. You came to your heavenly father's gathering place today. No father I'd rather spend with than the Father in heaven. Let's pray for all the dads this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for every man standing at this moment in time. We pray you'd bless their lives. God, what a privilege it is to have a father. 
a godly father. What a privilege it is to be a father. And Lord, help us to be better fathers because we met with our heavenly father today in this place. Sure to love you. Sure to love these men. Pray and watch over them. Give them a good day today, Lord. Help everyone that can be an encouragement and a blessing to them. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated, gentlemen. And I've decided, I have decided alone that we are now going to make June Father's Month. <laughs> Father's Month. This is now Father's Month. You say, who, who left you in charge? Me. So there you go. It's now Father's Month. June is officially here now and forever in Canada. Father's Month. All right, you think about it for a while. All right, next week, Pastor Len Crow, missionary to the people of Cambodia and Vietnam, will be with us, preaching and teaching the Holy Bible to us and sharing the need. How many believe, say amen, if you believe we need to reach Cambodians and Vietnamese around the world? Say amen. So we will have missionary uh, Len Crow next week will be with us. Last week's offering was wonderful. Thank you for giving to the work of God. $5,418 were given in total last Sunday. Please continue to be faithful to your giving and the work of the Lord so that the gospel may go around the world. There'll be a brief voting and meeting and we'll be presenting after church uh, this morning for just five minutes, about 10 minutes. We're going to take a vote on the foyer is as old as uh, it was installed when Noah got off the ark. And so we're going to remodel. And so we need to bring that to the church family. Let's not deliberate and drag things out and filibuster. It's Father's Day. I'm going home to eat steak. You could stay here and filibuster if you like, but I'm going home to eat steak. But we do need to take care of business because the price already went up because we didn't do it soon enough. So it went up just a little bit, all right? So we're going to do that real quick. Um, thank you, fathers, for standing. July 9th, missionary Bud Ring to the deaf people will be with us for two weeks. He'll set up his trailer here in the park, uh, in the parking lot, and he will be teaching a sign language institute, a sign language institute. Learn to communicate, share your faith with the deaf of Winnipeg and we're going to start reaching deaf people to the glory of God we've reached folks from all the different continents around the world we reach the homeless we reach the wealthy we reach the middle class we're going to start reaching the deaf amen and so I'm looking forward to uh, reaching out with a new ministry and expanding the vision of our church family with a deaf ministry. All right, really quickly, can I get Cassia, Hannah, and Allison to stand up? Cassia, Hannah, and Allison to stand up. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, are you graduating now, this month or next month, whatever? Yes, okay, are you graduating this month? Are you graduating this month? Okay, have a seat, please. Anyone else? Scott, are you graduating? I wasn't sure if you had finished. All right, girl, stand up. I didn't, please, ladies, please. All right, anyone else? You're graduating high school or college in May, June. You're graduating, finishing up. Anyone else? All right, let's, well, uh, let's thank these young ladies for a job well done. Let's, we appreciate your faithfulness in your schooling. Amen. God bless you. And Scott also. I forgot Scott's standing because he's an usher. I just forgot. Let, all right, Scott, you get your own. Okay, there you go, buddy. All right, so there you go, buddy. Okay. All right, let's pray for these young people. I pray, Heavenly Father, now we thank you for our young people that are in church, Lord. They don't, uh, in, a, in just a little while, they don't have to be here. But Father, they're here, and so we pray a blessing on their life. We pray that they would choose to follow you all the days of their life. We pray that you would guide them should you give them spouses. Their spouses love you very much and follow you in the far future. We pray you'd watch over them. Thank you that we can pray for them. We pray a blessing on them today in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm sure your dads are proud of all three of you. Okay, I'd like to at this moment really quickly just... Uh, uh, make a real quick note. Birthdays and anniversaries are coming up this week. Uh, Amea, where's Amea? Amea, where are you? Where's Amea? I, Amea, you have the greatest birthday in the whole world. Where are you? There you go. Stand up. Amea, um, let's see. Bob Santiago's not here. June Gaysbrecht's not here. Shirley Weeb, where are you? Shirley, Shirley, where are you? Shirley Weeb. Would you stand up, please, Shirley? All right, Shirley. Shirley has a birthday and an anniversary. Don, so go up and stand up next to your lovely wife. Let's congratulate these folks on their. Amea, stand up. Come on now. There you go. All right. Good job. Okay. Now, this time, just like take a moment. I acknowledge any first time new time visitors do we have any visiting folks may is this no that's never mind that's danielle i've just she's all grown up i keep thinking you know she's still a little kid she's all grown up okay are there any young or any adults or any visitors in this section no any new time first time is this your first or second time anyone here this morning can you raise your hand okay in this section specifically first or second time anyone okay no first or second time visitors in this section all right any first time second time visitors in this section all right we have several okay um brian are these folks first time second time 
Oh, okay. All right. Nice to finally meet you. The, the, Ross talks about you frequently in deacon's meetings, so amen. Very good to meet you frequently. Yeah, he says you were in California, and then you moved to Florida. See how much I know? <laughs> and you had a very high job in the space program. Is that right? No, I apologize. I'll, um, I'm slipping a few gears. It was very good to have you both here. How's life in Florida treating you? I'm going to see my grandchildren in Florida next week, so I'm excited about that. So, All right, folks in the back, who do we have? Yes, you were here, sir. Tell me your first name again. GN, good to have you here. Could you introduce your, your visitors? Yes, please. What is it? Charla, good to have you, Charla. Thank you. And? Rebecca, nice to meet you. Let's welcome these folks. Amen. It's good to have you. Amen. All right. And Lois is back. Amen. Obviously, the surgery took. Amen. So uh, that's great. You made up the stairs. So praise the Lord. We're glad you're here. We miss you when you're not here. Amen. Great to have you back. Amen. Good stuff. All right. Anyone in this section? Um, have you folks here been here once or twice? Twice. This is your second or? Okay. Can you tell me your names again, please? Riley and Abby, great to have you both here. Let's welcome our visitors this morning. Amen. <laughs> Let's make sure these two dear ladies get a done book and a card. Please fill out that card so we can just thank you for visiting with us. At this time, Haley's going to come and play, and we're going to do what we like to do. What am I missing, Roy? You're pointing at somebody. What am I missing? Yes, Ruth. Yes. All right. Let's all, at this time, Haley's going to come and play. We're going to stand. Look, I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm in a lot of pain right now. I got my first senior citizen's discount. It was a heavy blow. I don't want to talk anymore. I'm just going to go home and cry now. Start playing. Stand, shake hands, say hello to somebody, please. What's up? Hi, 
rest me in the thought of rocks and trees, of skies and seas, his hand the wonders wrought. This is my father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my father's world. I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees, of skies and seas, and the wonders wrought. This is my father's world. The lily white declare their maker's praise. This is my father's world. He shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass I hear him pass. He speaks to me everywhere. This is my father's world. Oh, let me ne'er forget That though the wrong seems oft so strong God is the ruler yet This is my Father's world The battle is not done Jesus who died shall be satisfied And earth and heaven be one I'll ask you please remain standing for the remaining of our choruses today. We're going to sing Our God Reigns, and yes, he does. How lovely are the mountains, are the feet of him who brings good news. We'll finish our singing this morning with How Deep the Father's Love for Us. How deep 
the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only Son to make a wretch his Mar the chosen one, bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon the cross, my sin upon his shoulders, ashamed I hear my mocking It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast of standing for our scripture reading this morning. Thank you, singers. We appreciate you leading us in song. Thank you, Jason. If you have your Bibles, we're just going to read two verses, and then we're going to have a special, and then we'll get right into the sermon. Would you turn with me in the Old Testament this morning to the book of 1 Chronicles, 1 Chronicles chapter 28. 1 Chronicles chapter 28. And I just, I'll read two verses this morning. We'll have a word of prayer, and then Jerry and Scott will come and minister to our hearts in song this morning. If you, I'll read verse 10 singularly, and you'll read verse 10, uh, 9. I'll read 9 out loud, and then you'll read verse 10 with me in unison, all right? The Bible says in First Chronicles chapter 28, verse number 9, And thou, a father speaking to his son, David speaking to Solomon, and thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart and a willing mind for the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee, but if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Together, ready? Take heed now, for the Lord hath chosen thee to build an house for the sanctuary to be strong and do it. May God bless the public reading of his word. Let's pray together. Let's unite our hearts in one accord. Let's ask for God to be pleased. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege. We thank you for the blessing. We thank you for the gathering of the saints, for the called out and the assembling of the saints to be in one place at one time. Holy Spirit of God, please, in Jesus' name, if there's anyone that is on their way straight to hell, today would be the day of conviction of their sins. Holy Spirit of God, if there's a backslidden Christian who's double-minded and playing games, that you might touch their hearts. 
Heavenly Father, if there's someone that just needs to make right decisions, they'd stop waiting for emotional feelings and, and just see it in Scripture and do it. Lord, we love you. Sure to love these people. These are good people, Lord. We pray a blessing on each and every dad in the room today. Thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated as uh, two of our men minister to our hearts and to the Lord in song. awake before the sun with his bible opened up seeking truth with every single page he turns anyone can see my daddy lives what he believes in his gentle heart and passion for jesus burns i know we have our time we disagree but the longer I live it's clear to me I want to be that man who loves the Lord with all his heart just like the word commands who takes a stand leads his family as he holds the father's hand i want to be that man society would say there's a new ideal today not what you give it's more about what you can gain but I want to live a life that's marked by sacrifice, like the Savior who died to show us all the way. So I'll take up my cross and trace his steps. Surrendering is how I'll serve him best. I want to be that man who loves the Lord with all his heart just like the word commands who takes a stand and leads his family as he holds the father's hand I want to be that man just like Peter, Paul, and all the saints of days gone by. Let me show that kind of faith to those who come behind. I want to be that man who loves the Lord with all his heart, just like the Word commands who takes a stand and leads his family as he holds the Father's hand. I want to be that man. I'll lead my family as I hold the Father's hand. I want to be that man, that man. Elections won't change the face of a nation, but men fulfilling their God-given responsibility as Christians will change the face of a nation. Stepping up, playing your role, and fulfilling that which God would have you to do. So today I'd like to speak to just a little while to all of the fathers in the room and just challenge each one of you to be the man. This morning I want to talk to you about my father's God, my father's God. 
The story we've just read is the story of David. David is getting ready to leave this old world behind. His son Solomon is getting ready to be king, and he will take over, and he will fulfill and continue the propagation of the faith of the people of Israel. He's given him instruction. God wouldn't let David build the temple because he was a man of war and a man of blood, but he had to be that man. That was his hour. That was his arena. But Solomon's is a different arena. And so here David is giving instruction to his son on how to lead. By the way, dads, that's a really good thing for each one of us to learn to do is to give our sons the instruction that they need when they're young, when they're middle-aged, and when they're even older. So I want to challenge you this morning with some questions. What kind of a life have you lived? What contribution will you and I as men be leaving behind? Once you are gone, will people think well of you or I? What will they remember the most about us? Diligence, hardworking, Always tackling, accomplishing the tasks right in front of them with aggression, in a good way, of course. That you were decent, moral, and always trying to be a good example for others. That you were faithful to your spouse and your family, honoring the vows that God had laid before you and you committed unto him. That you accepted God and the free gift of salvation that he offered. Or that you rejected his leading and desires that he had for you, that you trusted Christ as your Savior, that you obeyed his precious word, that you were faithful to the Lord's church house and gathering and his people consistently worshiping and fellowshipping with God. Father's Day, today's the day we kind of honor Dad, if you will, but the worst thing that you and I could do is to dishonor the Heavenly Father in our lives today. I'm glad that all of our dads are here. I'm glad that all of them are able to be here this morning. And I've just got a declaration I want to make to you this morning. I want to put this on the wall. Real quickly, the Bible says this. The Heavenly Father wants to be your father here below while you live on this planet called Earth in the flesh. But my proposition to you is this. My challenge to you is this. Will you allow him to be your father Is he your God? You say, yeah, I'm saved. He's my heavenly father. Just because he's your heavenly father doesn't mean that you and I are good, obedient sons. Amen? Lots of sons are disobedient to their fathers. Lots of sons are very honoring and obedient and caring of their father. But the question is, will you allow him to lead you as your father so that you can lead your children, so that you can lead this nation indirectly? And so that's what David says this morning. That's what he says this morning to uh, his son named Solomon. And the Bible says this in verse 9. Let's revisit those verses. And now, Solomon, my son, know thou that the God, uh, know now, uh, and thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father. Solomon, I want you to know my God like I know him and serve him. Know my God. The sermon is very bullet riveted, built. Uh, bullet pointed today and it's going to be very clear and very concise this morning number one is know my God know my God is God your God do you know that God is your God how many of you are grateful that you're a blood washed born again and you'll never be in hell could you say amen? amen I hope that you know the Lord as your savior but let's get it straight Just because we are born into his family through the new birth does not make you and I obedient children of the Lord Jesus Christ, of the Heavenly Father, if you please, this morning. We need to choose to follow him. We need to desire to be with him, to know him. Many years ago, long before, even before I was born, though I get senior citizens discounts, did I mention that this morning? I get senior citizens discounts. There was a movie made years ago starring Yul Brenner, and I think it was Mary Martin or somebody like that. It's called The King and I. My man walk around, he had a perfect hairdo, by the way. He walks around like, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But there was a song in this musical uh, film years ago, and uh, the woman would say to the children she was tutoring, She would say, getting to know you, and now I'm not going to sing, say amen right there. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you, and, uh, you know, walking through, you know, and I don't know all the lyrics, but she talks about getting to know them as individuals, as people, as having a relationship with them. Just because you're born in the family, my challenge and question to you this morning is, do you know him? 
I'm not asking you if you're going to heaven in this moment. I'm asking you, do you personally walk with him? Getting to know you, getting to know all about you, spending time with him. If you're going to know him, you've got to spend time with him. If you're going to spend time with him, you've got to crack that book open. And he's going to talk to you. You talk to God in prayer and God speaks to you through his holy word. David says to his son, know my God. Let's look at a cross reference on the wall. Philippians 3.10, guys. That I, say it everyone, that I may know him. I, I'm going to do it anyway. I know who Justin Trudeau is. I don't know him. Does that make sense? He is the prime minister of the nation I live in, but I don't know him. I won't make jokes. I'm staying the course right now. But here's the thing. I won't be cute or funny. But here's the thing. If you're going to have a relationship with God, you need to know him. You need to know him. You need to know what makes him happy, what makes him sad. And by the way, you can make God sad with your disobedience and my disobedience. We need to get to know him. And you cannot know him unless you spend time with him. And the only way you can spend time with him, in a sense, is getting to know him is in the Bible. We heard that it was a treasure on Sunday night. We heard that this book is a treasure. How many of you believe this is a treasure? I hope that you and I treat it as a treasure. I hope that the words on these pages are precious to you, Dad, so that you can be that man. And David said to Solomon, I want you, my boy, to know my God. And that's the only way that you and I, and I can get to know him is by spending time in his word. Hey, listen, I pray to God that every dad and every man and every child, that you get more Bible in your life than what I feed you on Sunday morning and Thursday nights. I'm thankful for everyone that comes. I'm thankful for our new visitors and first-time visitors and different folks. But hey, listen, I can only feed you so much on Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday. You got to feed yourself. Dad, you got to feed your family. You got to feed your family. All of my kids' lives, they understand that we are a Bible reading. Now, the old, listen, let me let you in on a secret as their children the older they get, the harder it gets. Stay with me. The older they get, the harder it is to have a family altar. You need to read with them the word. How many times have you read in the family the book of Proverbs? Just guess. 80? Would you say at least 80? I would say, I would venture because before you were born, the families read them hundreds of times out loud together. You want some wisdom? Go to the book of Proverbs. Dad, you need to make sure you read the word of God with your children. It is your responsibility. All right. Uh, you got to open to 28 there? Chapter, what do you got it open to? Okay, go to 28. Okay, this is just like we do in church. You get them to do this when they're young. Okay, I'll read verse 9, you read verse 10, Okay. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Okay, so we alternate, and then Jessica reads the verse, and then Sarah reads the verse, and then Michelle reads the verse, and then I read the next verse. You don't have to have a church service. You can read 15 verses. It's something, especially you parents who have got your kids like we did in public school. You need to feed them in the morning. You need to feed them the word of God before the devil gets them in the classroom. Say amen. You need to feed them in the morning. They need, to, they need to do that more than they need to curl their hair, put makeup on, and iron their clothes. They need to get a little bit of feeding to the best of their ability, or your ability, or time allows you. And so we, you need to feed them, and that's the way that your children, when they're young, know your God. Number one, David said, Solomon, know my God. Number two, David said, serve my God. Let's say that. Everyone say, serve my God. Serve. One more time. All right, God wants us to serve him. It's one thing to know him. It's another thing to do. And I taught that this morning. Whoa, is it hot in here? And I taught that in my Sunday school this class this morning in the main auditorium. I was teaching the fact that you need to serve the Lord and get involved in the work of God and be involved in the work of God. And God says that we need to serve him. Let's look at a cross-reference to the word serve. Let's put that on the wall, guys. Psalms 100, verse 2. Everyone read the blue words out loud. Say it. One more time. With gladness. In other words, 
you don't want to be the greeter at the church and go, hi, welcome to Victory Baptist Church. We're so glad. We're so glad to see you're here. Thanks for coming. Hey, with gladness. You say, I can't. My spiritual gift is pouting. Change your spiritual gift. Change your spiritual gift. Get excited. Jesus is coming. You're still saved. Let's get excited about this place. That's why we hug and shake hands and say hello. It's got to get past the frozen chosen. Amen. It's got to get past the click club. The click club. All you homeschoolers know what I'm talking about. That's a Patch the Pirate song from years and days gone by. My kids, we used to play that. They'd say, we don't want you to hang out with us. We're in the click club. No church should have clicks. Michelle ain't here. I can have fun today. Come on now. I'm going to wait. All right. She's actually in the nursery, by the way. No, my God. Serve the Lord with gladness. Don't be a powder. Be a glorious shouter. Come before his presence with singing. That's why we sing to our God with gladness. Uh, there is an attachment of serving God with singing to God. One more time. Serving God with singing to God. I know that applies to the singers in the temple, but I think there's a New Testament principle that God says making melodies and songs in our hearts. Serving God takes an effort. It takes work. If I'm going to please my wife, if I'm going to please my children, if I'm going to build my children and walk with my wife, it's going to take a conscious effort to do it. And sometimes it won't be fun but it'll take an effort. We all need to do that. Dads, you need to teach your children to serve your God, to know your God. Victory Baptist Church needs to make sure that the singing around here pleases God more than it pleases you or I. We need to make sure that God's happy more than we are the consensus of the congregational family. My dad's a great dad. Never missed a hockey game, never missed a ball game. My dad's a great dad. Took us to Disneyland and Six Flags over Georgia. My dad's a great dad. We had family vacay every year. A year. But my dad was a hit and miss dad when it came to the things of the Lord, reading the Bible or attending church. That's a so-so dad. Say amen or say oh me. We need to be great dads and great dads make sure their families are following their heavenly father. I am responsible, and I am going to answer. Have I blown it? You better believe it. Have I made a fool of myself? Absolutely. The hardest people in this room to preach to are the people that call me Mr. Muscles and Handsome and Dad. That's only two people, my wife and my kids. They're the hardest people to preach to. They know what a fake and a fraud and a hypocrite and a phony I am. A prophet is not without honor, yea, save in his own house. It's hard to preach to them because they know you inside and out. But dads, that doesn't negate your responsibility to get your family to know your God. Make sure to the best of your ability, you cannot force anyone to get saved, but make sure that your children have the avail, the opportunity in the home to know your God, to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. That's not always fun, fellowship of the suffering being made conformable unto his death, not only to know him, and once they know him, to serve him, but with gladness. Serve as a family. Get involved in church. Years ago, Michelle and I, while well, I was in Bible school, uh, I ran, I worked on one bus route in an area called East Chicago in Illinois, and I ran another bus route when I was continuing my education in Cleveland, Ohio, on the west side of Cleveland, and Michelle and I were in charge of the route. And they gave us this big empty yellow bus and said, fill it with kids, fill it with people. I said, okay. <laughs> so every Saturday, Michelle and I and our two oldest ones who, who are not here in Winnipeg, we would get in the car with two teenagers from the church and we would literally go door to door with the kids and say, are you coming tomorrow? Would you like to come to church tomorrow? Here's my wife. Hey, I got a family. I could go to the park with my kids. Oh, do I care about these snotty kids with dysfunctional homes and families? I got my own family to run. Hey, we were building our family together. Before any of the three of my kids that you know, we would knock on doors. My wife was pregnant. We were on a big bus going into East Chicago, building a family, trying to get ready for ministry. And she would plop her accordion on her tummy and stand while the bus is going down the road playing Jesus Loves the Little Children. You did, how many didn't know Michelle could play the accordion? 
because she hates it, man. She'd rather work in the nursery and scrub toilets. Anyway, and she's standing there swaying like this. I took my daughter and I put her in a car seat and I grabbed a rope and I roped the car seat and knotted it and knotted it and, and put her in it. And she was only like six to eight months old. But that's what we did because our Lord needs to be served. He's our Father. He is worthy of service. 21st century Christianity is all about feed me, make me happy, smiley, fun. And I'm for all, I want everyone to feel wanted here. And you are wanted. Whether you're a visitor or you've been here for 30 years, you're wanted. You are welcome. But I still have to preach the living word of God. And sometimes it'll get under your skin a little bit. How many understand good dads get under your skin a little bit? Those who always capitulate to their children raise monsters. Raise monsters. And so you need to know God and to serve God and be involved in the work of God. And so David told Solomon, I don't want you to just know him. I want you to get involved and serve him with all of your heart. Too many Christians have dialed it back and settled back and are backing off. And too many dads are not fulfilling the role we have accepted the role model when I was a when I was a very young boy in the 70s there were already reruns but there was a show I used to love to watch all summer father knows best with Robert Young and Jane Wyatt and father was always the good guy and mother was always the good lady I know it was Hollywood and TV and all that but it set a role model for society do you know what your role model is today young people look up here Homer Simpson God have mercy if you think that's what a dad's supposed to be like. Okay, all right, just checking. And so we need to watch out for that stuff, but we need to serve God and be the man that God would have each one of us. Not only should we know God, not only should we serve God, but number three, we need to seek God. Number three, we need to seek my God. Let's say all those together, all three, ready? Know my God, serve my God, Seek my God, my son Solomon, David said. I need you to seek God. It, it, you can get busy. And how many understand this? Okay, so, all right, pastor, I understand. You know him, you get saved. The Holy Spirit lives within you, hallelujah. You know your God. You serve him, you get involved in church. But, you know, you can get so busy uh, wiping down the desk and arranging the flowers like Sarah did or even practicing piano like Haley does or your song. You can get busy doing like Martha and not be truly seeking him in your soul that you really kind of you've got that strained relationship and there have been times I've had strained relationships with my, all the five of my children for various reasons sometimes it was my sin sometimes it was theirs and sometimes it was just coldness but you need to seek God don't wait for tingly feelings of emotion they may never come but seek him with all your heart let's do some cross-referencing right now real quick here Let's look at the first one is Isaiah 55, 6. We're talking about seeking God right now. Let's say the blue word. Say them out loud. Ready, begin. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. God is near. Hey, listen. I'm not going to get into preaching this, but there may come a time where he won't be so readily, easily found if you're not saved. He can go very quiet. He can be grieved. And he can be, uh, not that anyone can't get saved, and I don't know when or what it is, but he can be found. And my imploring you this morning is, as a pastor to a friend, seek the Lord. Find him. I know this is Old Testament, but if you're not a believer, become a believer, become a born-again Christian, become saved, trust in the blood of Christ, seek the Lord while he may be found. T behold, today is the day of salvation. So if you're going to seek him, you're going to have to spend some time, number two, look on the wall in the New Testament verse. If you're going to seek the Lord in the New Testament, 539, let's read the whole verse together. Ready, begin. Search the scriptures. And they are they which testify of me. They, the Bible, are they, the Bible, which testify of me, Jesus Christ. Search the scriptures. Search the scriptures. You need to go home and learn to search the scriptures. Say, I'm not a reader. Just read a little bit. 21 chapters in the Gospel of John. Easy to read about Jesus, getting to know Jesus. John's Gospel. Need some wisdom in your head? Proverbs. Read some Proverbs. Learn every workaday life. Learn how to get through life with some wisdom. Soft answer, turneth away wrath. A man that would have friends must show himself friendly. 
Wine is the mocker, strong drink is raging, and he that's deceived thereby is not wise. There's all kinds of practical helps if you search the scriptures in the book of Proverbs. You want to get, uh, you want to see how beautiful God is? Spend some time in Psalms, though a lot of Psalms really does talk about the second coming and the millennial. See how beautiful and glorious your king is. Search the scriptures and find him because they testify, they tell about your glorious Savior and Heavenly Father. When you leave home, or when you and I leave this old world, son, the Bible says, be strong for my God. Let's visit the verses again. Let's go back to 28, look at 8 and 9 one more time. 28, 8 and 9. And now Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father. I want you to know my God. And I pray that your God is the one true living God and not the God of fishing and hunting and not the God of CFL and NHL and NBA and, and, and not the God of laziness or selfishness, but the God of the creator of the universe. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou, but if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever so David tells him to search for God but when we leave this world he says I son I am begging you I'm imploring you build your life on God build your relationship on his precious precious word know the God of your father know him know him deeply children daughters and sons know the God of your father be strong Finally, he teaches him to be strong for his God. Look with me if you drop down. We're gonna, I believe it's verse 20. It's not in my notes, but I think I'm going to use it anyway. Go to uh, chapter 28. We're still there. and verse, I think it's verse 20. And David said to Solomon, his son. Ah, there it is. Good. Praise the Lord. Be strong and of good courage. Strength and courage. Strength and courage. Strength and courage. Two dirty words in the 21st century. Men are supposed to be strong and courageous strong and courageous it doesn't mean you have to be a big mouth like me it doesn't mean you have to be boisterous it just means and it doesn't mean you have to be able to lift the weights be strong and courageous strength to say as for me and my house we will serve the lord i need you on board with me honey we're gonna read i need you on board with me honey we're going to pray. I need you on board, kids. Have the strength to do what's right and be courageous. That's what God says men are to do. There's a father telling his son before he leaves this world, son, I need you. God wants you to be strong. Please do not confuse strength with NHL, NFL, CFL. NBA. We got too many cotton-headed ninny muggins calling themselves men. <laughs> I'm losing my mic here. It's a sign. Did I lose it? Am I still on, guys? Okay. Listen, we don't need cotton-headed ninny muggins. Act like a man. Oh, good. I'm glad. Act like a man. Walk like a man. Talk like a man. Behave like a man. I understand that some men are more of a slight constitution. That's the way God made you. I understand some men are more bookish and academic. I understand that, and I embrace that. And thank God not everyone's a Neanderthal like me and Shane, right? They're not laughing. I thought it was great. Anyway, so we'll never take them hunting with us, will we? That's right. Amen. We'll go ourselves. But listen, video game warriors is not strength and courageous. Hey, I get it. Golfing's out, video games are in. I get it. Hunting and fishing are technically out, video games are in. I get it. But you need to be strong and you need to be courageous. I'm so sick and I'm so fed up with this whole, <laughs> I have to be a girl now. I have to be, a, I'm not a girl. I'm not a girl. And I don't want my sons to be girls. And I don't want my girls to be boys. I want them to be what God made them to be, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Start acting like it. Yes, you're right. You are going to be an illustration. I didn't plan on it at all. I got five minutes. I'm good. Since he was this big, this big, specifically more his brother and his sister on the 
first part. I would tell them, when the landline rings, you say, what's a landline? It's a phone plugged into a wall that sits on a table. It's called a landline, kids, all right? When the landline rings when you were young, what were you supposed to do? Stand up like a man, by the way. There, you let go. There, you're nervous. Don't be nervous. Don't mind them. Okay, now, answer the phone like it's ringing. When you were young, what were you supposed to do? Okay, but you were supposed to say, hello, Pittman House, and we would practice, and we would practice, and we would practice. Too many kids go, the phone's ringing. You answer it. Be courageous. Not him. I'm not talking about him, but I've seen kids do that stuff. The phone's ringing. They have the meltdown, mental meltdown. How many know what I'm talking about? Yeah, right across the room, see? Okay. Now, when he was little, I used to tell him, okay, when you talk to a grown-up, now I know you can't because I'm down here and you're up here a little bit more now, but what would I always say? Yes, and don't what? Right? Right? Sh squeeze. Right. Stick your finger out, and no one will ever crush your hand, right? That's right. And don't be a willy-nilly. I don't care what the world's doing. And I believe strength and courageousness are synonymous with masculinity. You don't have to be a brute. We've got some brilliant minds in this church. Academics. Academics. Several men I'm thinking of just right away. You don't have to be Neanderthal. God made us all different. But don't be a ninny. Be strong. That's Bible. He says, son, be strong. Be courageous. Go ahead and sit down. Okay. But teach them to walk like a man. Do not teach them. And I preach this at our men's meeting, but I'm going to be very polite this morning. Teach them not to walk like this. I'm not trying to, I promise you, by God's, I'm not trying to be entertaining this morning, though it is entertaining because you're, I'm preaching to the choir. But teach your young men to walk like men, to stand like men. It's okay. This may not be Bible, but Bible is strong and courageous. Tell me, you tell me, body language screams. Does this scream strong and courageous? I know, and I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to help you. I am watching Christian kids, and you think I'm talking about Winnipeg. I am not. I could name child that I personally know, after child I personally know, that after child I personally know, that after child I personally know, that after child I personally know, from kindergarten to 12, in Christian school, in a local New Testament church school, on visitation and soul winning every Wednesday afternoon, played sports and everything, and they are going the way of all flesh and its wickedness. I can't help them but I can warn those I know and see every week and love. Please, visitors, and again, I'm sorry. Wow, the one day you show up, <laughs> I feel bad. Listen, hey, please, visitors. Listen, this is for our dads this morning to encourage our sons and our daughters to be what God would have them to be and not blur the lines of confusion to be what God would have each one of them to be. And according to the scriptures... That's what it clearly says. And David's, sorry, I, I went to the wrong one. And David said to Solomon, his son, his son, he was responsible for his son. Be strong. This is not optional. Be strong and of good courage and do it. Do it. Do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed. For the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. Hallelujah. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. Now, we don't have to build a temple, but many of you have poured your blood, sweat, and tears into this building. It's not a temple to God. And in 10 years from now, it could be a bar. Buildings come, buildings go. It's irrelevant. But building the lives of God's people, specifically the ones that God let you call dad, is building the house of God. Be that man. Be that man. And if, if you're not a dad yet, and if you're not married yet, you pray, God, help me to be that man so that I can raise children and give them back to God. Every one of my children, on the day of their birth, I took them, and I put them down on the couch. You say, why on the couch? Because we home birth. <laughs> we, it cost 500 bucks back in the day and so I put them on the couch and I kneeled down right after they were delivered and I said Lord I give this child to you I give this child to you it's your child it's not my child Lord please help me to be faithful steward of that which you have given me 
And every dad, you need to commit your children to the Lord. Now, if they don't turn out, you do the best you can. You walk the close with your God as you can. Don't forsake his book. Don't forsake his house. Don't forsake his precepts and his ways. Being a child of the Heavenly Father is not a sprint or a dash. It is a lifelong marathon for dads and children and moms. But will you allow him to be your father and guide you all the way? Is he your God? Your God, not pastor's God, but your God. Is he your God? Not our God, Victory Baptist Churches, but is he your personal Heavenly Father? Do you know him? It's time for commitment, dads, once again. I'm going to challenge you. And this, this is the criticism of an old-time church philosophically. If I say you're a dad and you need to focus on raising your children to the glory of God, and I invite you, you say, well, you're just trying to manipulate, you're trying to pull. I don't get paid any more or less whether you come to the altar. But if the Holy Spirit touches you to come and pray, you get the benefits and glory to an obedient heart. Some of you, as your friend, as your pastor, as your brother in Christ, I have never in six years, never in six years, seen you come to an old-fashioned altar. Not one time. You say, oh, you're twisting arms now. No. I'm your pastor. I'm your friend. I'm just saying, some of you, there's six years. It's a long time to not pray for your children, to not pray for your spouse, to not pray for your lost friends and family members, to never hit the altar, to fix it. Say, I'm embarrassed. That's the point. You'll get over it. Sometimes during the song service, I'll just go forward and pray. I don't care if anyone sees me because I need him. I need my father. I need him. Sometimes Rush goes to the altar and I get convicted that I need to go to the altar. Somebody has to bear the weight spiritually. So I want to challenge you this morning. Uh, I want to encourage each one of you this morning. If you need to do business, put aside your nervousy fear and come forward and pray for your family. Don't worry about what your spouse thinks. Don't worry about what your kids think. Kids, don't worry about what your parents think. If you need to do business today, be that man, be that woman for Jesus Christ. And I'm going to close with this question. There's too many people going to too many good churches that are truly not saved don't play games. Don't be Judas in the house of God and never know the God of heaven. I'm not being mean. I just want you to go to heaven with me, amen? I just want you to be there in glory with us when we go. He really is coming again. Let's stand to our feet with every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. I'm going to ask my questions to fulfill the Great Commission. How many here would say, I am not saved? Anyone say, I'm not saved. I've been playing 40 years I'm not saved raise your hand close your eyes every head bowed every eye closed respect of others in your area please how many here would raise a hand and say you know what Pastor Pittman I, I am saved raise your hand I testify to heaven I raise my hand towards heaven I'm saved that's most of us put your hands down how many here would say I know someone that's not saved that I love with all my heart and they need to be saved and I'm burdened with them would you raise your hand Okay, why don't you come, not yet, why don't you come when Haley starts playing? I'm going to pray for that person today. We're going to pray for those people today. How many here would say, Pastor Pittman, I am a child of God, I am not baptized, and I know God has said, swallow your pride. The Holy Spirit said, it's time to do business. Anyone this morning, I need baptism. Raise your hand so I can see it. Anyone this morning, there's usually a few. Anyone? I did not see anyone this morning. How many here say, I am saved, I am baptized. I am not a member of a right kind of a church. I'm not a member of any church. I need to align with a biblical church. Would you raise your hand? Some did last week. How many would do that? Yes, ma'am, God bless you. Any others say, I need to be part of a biblical church. I need to jump in the deep end of the pool and serve my king and my Lord. Anyone else? I need to be a part of a scriptural church. How many here say, there's something I need to do business about? Just raise your hand. God touched me in some way. Amen. Several hands. Okay. As Haley begins to play, if you need to pray, come on your own. Come with your spouse. Come with your children. Come and pray as Haley begins to play if you need to.
Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of being your child, to be with you on your day, Lord, the Lord's day. Please bless each dad that came today and encourage them, Lord, and edify them and build them up. Lord, these are good men. These are Some of them are very godly men, far better Christian than I will ever be. And I pray that you bless their lives and continue to grow the new Christians and continue to help us to uh, be distinctly scriptural and distinctly spirit-filled, Lord so that we can be salt and light into a lost and a dying and dark world. We sure do love you. Bless each dad and help each child to appreciate their dad. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated this morning. We look forward to seeing you Thursday evening.